This video is sponsored by Skillshare. The first 500 people to go to skl.sh slash polyphonic14 will get two months of Skillshare for free. When a movie wants to drop you in the middle of the Vietnam War, they'll give you a few key indicators. There's the lush jungle, the black helicopters overhead, the close-ups of boots in the swamp. But perhaps more than any of this, if a movie really wants you to be in Vietnam, it does so with the soundtrack. There have been few historical events as intrinsically tied to music as the Vietnam War. In our minds, the war has a clear and distinct soundtrack. And that's not just because these songs were released during the conflict. It's because the Vietnam War was an essential part in creating the very songs we now use to define it. Let's take a closer look. While the United States was involved in Vietnam in an advisory role in the 1950s, their presence really began to escalate in the early 1960s. During these first days of escalation, the seeds of protest were already growing in one New York neighborhood, Greenwich Village. Inspired by the great folk singers of generations past, the folk scene in Greenwich Village began to use their music as a means for political action. One of the most important figures in this scene was Phil Oakes, who would remain a constant critic throughout the duration of the Vietnam War. He released Vietnam Talkin' Blues in April 1964. Well, training is the word we use, nice word to have in case we lose. That song came out just a few months before August 1964's Gulf of Tonkin incident, which led to a sharp increase in American involvement in the war. Around this time, another protest anthem was taking on a new meaning, Bob Dylan's A Hard Rain's A Gonna Fall. Originally written as a response to the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis, Bob Dylan's song warns of some kind of impending doom. It uses cryptic, symbolic imagery to paint the mood at the time. There was a feeling that something was hanging over the world, that all of the symbols were pointing toward a hard rain falling. That song took on all new meaning as Vietnam became more familiar to the American public, and the symbol of rain, in particular, seemed altogether too relevant. In 1965, Barry Maguire found a hit song that pushed the same message as A Hard Rain's Gonna Fall, Eve of Destruction. Tell me over and over and over. Written by P.F. Sloan, Eve of Destruction paints the same dark message as Hard Rain, but opts for a more literal approach. Musically, the sound of early Vietnam protest was defined by folk, defiant dark words over simple acoustic guitars. But this wasn't the music that was being listened to on the ground in Vietnam. One of the biggest hits for the soldiers in Vietnam drew from blues and rock and roll, the animals we've got to get out of this place. Released in the summer of 1965, that song proved to be a fortunate choice for the animals to cover. Though it was originally written for the Righteous Brothers, the animals' take on it resonated with soldiers, becoming one of the most requested songs in the US Armed Forces after its release. Just five months after, in November 1965, one of the first major American battles of the Vietnam War took place in the Ayadrang Valley. Nearly 300 Americans were killed in that battle, galvanizing action back in America. One of the anthems of these protests came in the form of Phil Oak's defiant, I ain't marching anymore. Oh, I must have killed a million men and now they want me back again, but I ain't marching anymore. But not all of the music hitting the American airwaves was against the war. In December 1965, Staff Sergeant Barry Sadler decided that he'd seen enough folk music protesting the war, so he recorded his own song, celebrating its heroism. That song, Ballad of the Green Berets, was inspired by actual events in Vietnam. It was written in honor of James Gabriel Jr., who had died there in 1962. Just what they say, the brave men. 
It was a massive patriotic hit that topped Billboard's charts for five weeks straight. The song that it knocked off the top was another key piece of the Vietnam soundtrack. Nancy Sinatra's These Boots Are Made For Walking. Like with We've Gotta Get Out Of This Place, Vietnam soldiers co-opted this song and related it to their own experiences, walking through the marshes of Vietnam in heavy boots. The song became even more popular with the soldiers on the ground when Sinatra went to Vietnam as part of a USO tour. More and more soldiers would be listening to Sinatra's song in Vietnam with each passing year. By 1966, nearly 400,000 troops were on the ground in Vietnam, and the rifts in American culture were becoming more clear. Anti-war activism was on the rise, and musically, it was spilling out of the folk scene. Buffalo Springfield still had a foot in folk, but they were also tied to the growing psychedelic rock movement. That movement would become a vocal part of American counterculture, and bring on an explosive set of riots on Los Angeles' Sunset Strip in November 1966. These riots inspired Buffalo Springfield's biggest song, For What It's Worth. And though it wasn't specifically about Vietnam, For What It's Worth became an essential part of the soundtrack to the era. I think it's time we stop, children, what's that sound? Everybody look what's going down. Though it's common detached musically, it painted a lyrical picture of the growing tensions at the time. It vocalized a thought that many people were having at the time. Battle lines were being drawn between those who supported and resisted the war in Vietnam. These battle lines would become even more clear as protests became larger and more frequent in 1967. By the time summer rolled around, the American West Coast counterculture was having its heyday in San Francisco. Known as the Summer of Love, the summer of 1967 was characterized by drug use, free love, and of course music and Vietnam protests. The protest at this time was starting to take a different tilt. Far away from the earnest cries of Eve of Destruction, some of 1967's most infamous protest songs used comedy and satire. Now, this wasn't exactly new. Comedy was one of the best weapons in Phil Oakes' repertoire on songs like Draft Dodger Rag or Talk in Vietnam. But these songs abounded during the Summer of Love. This is evidenced in songs like Pete Seeger's Waist Deep in the Big Money. That song had a dark comic aspect to it, so much that it ended up being too critical for network television. CBS cut Seeger's performance of that song from a 1967 episode of the Smothers Brothers Comedy Hour. Though a few months later, after pressure from the public and the Smothers Brothers themselves, CBS would let Seeger back on to perform the song once more. We were knee deep in the big muddy, the big fools had to push on. Arlo Guthrie, the son of legendary folk singer Woody Guthrie, took the comedy to a whole nother level with Alice's Restaurant Massacre. Spanning 18 minutes, that song is a wild, satirical take that protests the Vietnam draft. Cause you wanna know if I'm moral enough to join army, burn women, kids, houses, and villages after being a litter bug. Country Joe and the Fish also used comedy in their I Feel Like I'm Fixin' to Die rag, a song built around a memorable chorus. While originally released in 1965, the 67 re-release of that song helped it become one of the biggest anthems of the protest movement. But not all protest music was this jovial. Soul music was proving to be a rich source of protest for black Americans at home and in Vietnam. At home, Nina Simone's Backlash Blues put music to a Langston Hughes poem that tied the Vietnam War to the civil rights movement among black Americans. freeze my wages and send my son to Vietnam. In November 1967, Aretha Franklin released Chain of Fools, a song about finding out your partner is having an affair, and the meaning was co-opted by soldiers in Vietnam. The darkness of Franklin's powerful voice gave the song a new meaning. The Chain of Fools became the chain of command in a chaotic, confusing war. And it went beyond soul. Another popular song for the troops pulls this darkness into rock and roll. The Box Tops, The Letter. That song had lyrical themes familiar to any Vietnam soldier. Getting letters from your beloved back home, and getting to go home and visit her. These songs were able to speak to the soldiers because of advances in broadcast technology which meant that it was easier than ever for soldiers to listen to music while in the field. 
It helped them keep a piece of home with them as they fought halfway across the world. But the advent of technology also meant that it was easier than ever for the people back home to see what was happening on the ground in Vietnam. And so, as the war dragged on towards the late 1960s, and more and more people were exposed to the brutalities of war, the music of the Vietnam era would take a heavier, darker turn, and some of the greatest names in rock history would start to take on important roles in the cultural stage. We'll take a look at that next week. One of the things that jumped out to me most while working on this video was the incredible talents of the photojournalists who captured the Vietnam War. And it turns out these kinds of photojournalistic skills can be taught. If you want to learn to take stunning documentary photos, you should check out Amy Vitale's documentary photography course on Skillshare. Vitale is a National Geographic photojournalist, and in that course she teaches you the techniques that she uses to document the world. And that's just one of thousands of courses that Skillshare has to offer. Skillshare is an online learning community with over 25,000 classes in design, music, business, and more. Premium membership gives you unlimited access to high quality courses on must know topics, and it's all for less than 10 bucks a month. If you're looking to make the most of your time, why not try out Thomas Frank's Productivity Masterclass? In that class, Thomas Frank teaches you the skills that he uses to make sure he's on top of all of his workloads. And now you can try all this out for free. The first 500 people to go to the link in the description will get two months of Skillshare absolutely free. And on top of that, if you follow that link, you'll be showing your support for my channel. So why not give it a try? Follow the link in the description, get two months free, and start learning today.